In this mini-clip, we will be discussing the domain of the natural logarithmic function. While we answer this question together, you will be solving the similar problem on your own using the same technique. We are asked to find the domain of ln ln2 plus ln x. Before we begin this problem, let's take a closer look at the graph of the natural logarithmic function since this will help us in finding the domain. Here we have the graph of the natural logarithmic function, y equals ln x. You will notice that all our x values are greater than zero. They become very close to zero, but they never equal zero. We have a vertical asymptote here. So we know that we can only take the ln of numbers that are positive or greater than zero. So now looking at our question, we're finding the ln of this number in here. So we know that ln 2 plus ln x has to be a positive number or greater than zero. So this is the first restriction we are going to have. We know that ln 2 plus ln x must be greater than zero. Now we would like to solve for our x variable. So we're first going to bring this ln 2 to the other side of the inequality sign. When we do this, ln 2 will become negative. So we will have negative ln 2. Now, thinking back to our logarithmic properties, we can rewrite this such that the negative 1 in front of this ln will be written as an exponent on the 2. So we will have ln x is greater than, Now we're not going to write this negative here because we're going to bring it to the exponent of the 2. So we'll have ln of 2 to the exponent negative 1. Now in order to isolate for this x here, we need to raise both sides of the inequality sign to the exponent of e. So we're going to have a base e, and we're going to raise this to the exponent. So e to the exponent ln x is greater than e to the exponent ln of 2 to the exponent negative 1. The reason why we do this is because, thinking back to our properties, e raised to the exponent ln x is simply equal to this number here. So in our case, it will be x. The same property applies to this side. e to the exponent ln 2 to the exponent negative 1 is simply equal to 2 to the exponent negative 1. So this helps us isolate for x easily. Lastly, we can change this so that the exponent will be positive. In order to do that, we need to write this as a fraction, and this will go into our denominator. So we will have x is greater than 1 over 2. Now, we sh could write a positive 1 here as the exponent, but 2 to the exponent positive 1 is simply 2. So we have the restriction that x must be greater than 1 half. I would now like you to state this first restriction in the question you are given. In your question, you should have found that x must be greater than 1 quarter. So now going back to our question, we need to ensure that we're always taking the ln of a positive number. So because we're taking the ln of this number here, our ref first restriction showed that whatever's inside this brackets must be greater than 0. But now let's take a closer look at what's inside the brackets. We know ln of 2, this there's no restrictions because there's no variables here. However, if we look at the second piece here, ln of x, since we're taking the ln of a number, once again we want to make sure that this number here is positive. So for our second restriction, we're going to be looking at ln x. Now remember, we, whenever we take the ln of a number, it has to be positive. So we know that this here must be greater than 0, or x must be greater than 0. I would now like you to state this restriction in the question you are given. You should also find that x is greater than 0. 
Now to find the overall domain of this expression here, we need to combine these two restrictions together. So we have that x is greater than 1 half and x is greater than 0. In order to do this, let's draw a number line. So here we have a number line for x. Our first restriction shows that x must be greater than 1 half. So 1 half would be somewhere here. Now, because it cannot equal one-half, we're going to draw an open circle. It could be anything greater than one-half. Our second restriction is that x must be greater than zero. So, because it's not equaling zero, I'm drawing an open circle, and we know that it can be anything greater than zero. So, now we need to find a restriction that satisfies both of these. And we'll notice when x is greater than 1 half, it is also greater than 0, and it is also greater than 1 half. So our overall domain will be simply that x must be greater than 1 half. So now we're going to write our overall domain. Therefore, then we have domain, squiggly brackets, x such that, x is greater than 1 half, since this is the inequality that satisfies both of these restrictions. Comma, and then we're going to have x belongs to all reals. And this here is our overall domain. I would now like you to find the overall domain for the question you are given. And here's the final answer you should have gotten.